Hi, welcome back to Genesis Custom Sabers. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to wire a recharge port to a rechargeable battery so that you can build a rechargeable saber. Uh, what you're gonna need for today is, of course, the rechargeable battery. This is a lithium ion battery, a uh, protected lithium ion battery from the Custom Saber Shop with a JST connector. You're gonna need your solder. Uh, you're gonna need helping hands. These things are invaluable. Uh, you're gonna need a soldering iron, um, safety, uh, eyewear as always. You're going to need the, uh, of course, the recharge port, this little guy. This is a Switchcraft brand and the plug that goes with it. Of course, you may have a, uh, a recharger, a battery charger already that has a 2.1 millimeter plug. Uh, you're going to need heat shrink tubing um, and uh, I, I get lots of this stuff so that I always have the right size and the right color when I need it. Uh, you're going to need a little bit of electrical tape, uh, wire snippers, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, you're going to need wire and a band-aid. Um, the wire you get, uh, I use 28 gauge stranded wire um, and it's fairly, well, it's very thin. Uh, 24 or 26 gauge is a little bit heavier, 22 gauge is heavier still. Um, you may not be aware, but the lower the gauge, the bigger the wire. You're going to want stranded wire. I like 28 gauge because it's thin, it can go almost anywhere. Uh, 26 is also good, but you're going to need uh, some lengths of color coded wire for this, as you'll see in a moment. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, battery, which is from the Custom Saber Shop. This is an 18500 battery. It's made from two cells, lithium ion. There's a protection circuit built into this. You always want to work with batteries that have protection circuits built in because lithium ion, uh, I've been told, can be volatile and dangerous. And if over discharging, uh, can even be known to explode. So the, uh, the protection circuit that's built in there uh, protects against that if the battery is short circuited, in other words, if it's over discharging too much power too quickly, it shuts shuts it off, uh, disconnects the battery, um, or when it gets uh, it doesn't get too low, the battery once it reaches reaches a low voltage threshold, um, the uh, the circuit cuts it off. So if you've got a saber with a lithium ion protected battery and you'll notice that it all of a sudden dies, it doesn't get low and start. Um, acting funny, it just dies all of a sudden. That's because it's got a protection circuit that gets reset when you plug the saber in and you recharge it. So it's a, a great safety feature, but I'm going to teach you a couple of things to also uh, stay safe when uh, when working with this. Of course, I always wear um, safety glasses when I'm working with any kind of chemistry or, or anything really in the shop. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to attach this battery to this uh, 2.1 millimeter recharge port. I use the Switchcraft brand uh, because I find them much more durable and uh, they just never fail. A little more expensive. I've got wires cut to length and I've got some heat shrink tubing. Uh, so really what I'm going to do is first first thing I'm going to get things set up. Uh, I've, I've measured my wires because the, this may not look like your saber. This is a custom PVC chassis that I've built for a, a custom saber I'm working on. Now the recharge ports need to is, is going to need to thread in there. So I know where it's going to go. I know exactly how much wire I'm going to need it. I, I know that I want to thread my my recharge port in first and then move my battery in. So I'm going to need enough wire to be able to do that and this just isn't enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip it right about there and I'm going to splice in longer wires. You can keep this JST connector. I'll show you how to use that later. Um, but first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, the recharge port here and I'm going to snip off these legs because they're longer than I need and uh, w when you've got a really high-end saber often you run out of space quickly. So I'm going to snip these off so I've got about a sixteenth of an inch on each of them. This one it's nice and easy because the uh, the metal goes from thick to thin. So I just snip off the thin part. It saves me about an eighth of an inch of space. And uh, I'm going to attach wires onto those and I'm going to heat shrink them. So here's what I do, uh, a little trick with heat shrinking. Because the shrink tube is going to go over these legs, I cut it at an angle like you can see here. So that when it shrinks it actually covers a little bit more of the metal. Uh, protects against a short circuit. Um, there's also one other thing I'm going to do. I don't have any handy. Yes, I do. I'm going to use this larger clear shrink and go over the whole thing just so that it's extra safe. So I'm going to snip off just maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch of each of these at an angle. Now you'll notice that they're slightly different sizes. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, an exact science when you're using heat shrink. I usually just buy lots of different sizes, different colors, and then for any job I've got, I've got lots. So now I've got my heat shrink, I've got my wires cut to length, so I'm going to set up for soldering uh, next, and we'll go from there. Okay, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to cut my wires and get them ready for the splice that I'm going to make. Um, now, when you're soldering wires, you don't want it to solder at a place where it's going to bend, so I'm going to solder right about there. And so I, I don't want to cut through both wires. 
because this is metal. When I cut through both wires, I'm completing the circuit. Now, of course, this battery's not going to explode. It's got a protection circuit in it. But I don't want to, uh, I don't want to activate that protection circuit unnecessarily. Um, you may have also noticed that I've put the heat shrink on. I like to put it on so I don't, uh, so I don't lose it and I don't forget it. This is a 3 8 inch heat, sh heat shrink, which is going to go over the recharge port connections. Um, I just like that size. So rather than snip through both, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to snip the uh, black one first. And uh, rather than move right on to the, to the red one, I'm going to use these um, that I've prepared. These are just folded over pieces of electrical tape. And uh, they make little tubes, so I can slide one over here and, uh, and then just kind of seal it on there so that um, I don't accidentally make connection with that, that negative wire. And then uh, I make sure that I, I line up and cut the, the red wire at the same spot. Again, it's a live red wire, so I want to uh, use a little piece of electrical tape to go over that. Uh, now I can set that aside and it's ready to go uh, for soldering my connections. Now if I wanted to, I could use this, uh, this JST connector that I've cut off there. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the wires to this recharge port. And then I'm going to uh, have another connection to a connector that goes to the uh, soundboard I'm using, in this case a crystal focus, but it could also be a petite crouton or whatever, as you'll see at the end. But I'm going to I'm going to use a slightly different connector than this um, to save some space, and uh, so I'm going to prepare that next, and uh, we'll get ready to do some soldering. Good rule of thumb is to start with the negative, the black wire. Um, there's an exception to that rule, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to strip a little bit of this wire like this, and I'm going to always give it a clockwise twist or whatever way the grain of the, the wire twisting, I don't know if even that's the right term. And uh, I'm going to pre-tin this before we solder. Pre-tinning is just uh, it's a more efficient way of soldering, get a better joint, so it's nice and ready to go. And I've got my black wire here, and this is already pre-tinned. And uh, I haven't cut heat shrink for this yet, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll do that next. So the nice thing about these helping hands is you can line them up. You don't need to twist these wires together as long as they're making good contact. I've got my solder. Yep. And uh, a little on the soldering iron. There's a good joint. We'll uh, double check this to make sure it is a good joint. Yeah, it looks good. So before moving on to the next one, I don't want to I don't want to risk that anything's going to come in contact with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a little bit of black heat shrink. Now here's a little little tip. I put the uh, larger heat shrink on here earlier um, so that I, I wouldn't forget it. Well, what's going to happen is if I heat this up, what do you think is going to happen to this? That's going to it's going to shrink down, and I'm not ready for it to shrink down yet. So I'm going to pull that off. So uh, this is sitting on here really quite nice and tight. It's not going to it's not going to come off. That's the thing is once you put a piece of heat shrink on, if it's a little bit larger than what you need, it slides around. Um, but that's actually in a really good spot. So I'm going to leave it and I'm going to move right onto the red wire. You make these kind of decisions as you go. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is because I've now I've got an exposed red wire and I've got exposed black wire at the end, I'm going to take this piece of tape that I just pulled off. I'm going to put it on the black wire. I've got another one handy here so that when I attach the red wire I'll be able to do the same thing. So it's just keeping that rule going so that they're not unnecessarily exposing any wires. Again, I'm going to strip that. Same thing, I'm going to tin this. Whoops. Touch the solder to the soldering iron to get it going. Now that joint came apart a little bit on me, so I'm going to undo it and do it again. It's the nice thing about solder is if it's not, if you're not entirely happy with it, you can do it again and become until you're really happy with it. There, that's a good joint. So I'm going to put shrink, shrink on this and, uh, and we'll get set up for the, uh, for the next phase. Okay, we're ready to uh, to solder and attach the uh, recharge port. Now, uh, this is an important step, and you may want to take your time with it. This is a Switchcraft brand, and as you can see, there's the SC there. And I've uh, learned by testing these that um, that I want my white wire, or the negative that's going to go to the soundboard, I want it to attach it here. I also know that the pin is going to be positive, and you can see that this tab here. Oops, is the one that goes to the pin. So that one is going to be my positive. So if you if you want to, um, just to mark it for your own purposes, you can take a take a sharpie. You can mark that red because red is the is the pin. 
just so that you're uh, carefully attaching your wires to the right spots because when dealing with batteries you don't want to short circuit things. So I've got my white wire that's going to go there, my red wire that's going to go there, that leaves my black wire. And I also know from testing, and you can follow it, trace it, that the, the black wire goes to this little spring-loaded lever and when the recharge uh, jack is, re is inserted in there, it disconnects power to the, through the white wire. And instead of the negative going to the white wire, well, now the negative is only going to that black wire. So that you can recharge the battery and there's no power going to your board while you're doing that. So it actually uh, operates as a switch. So I'm going to have uh, the black wire from my battery. It's going to go, where is it here? Black wire from my battery, which I've got protection on, is going to go to that, that little guy there and to my connector that I told you about earlier that I made myself. Um, my negative, which is the white wire, is going to go to the switchcraft and red to the pin. So we can set that up. So I'm going to do the white one first. So I've got that set up there. Now at this point I don't want to forget my heat shrink because once you make the joint you can't uh, slide it on afterwards. And here's another trick with the hands of the, the arms of the helping hands. Because these wires, the insulation can sometimes get heated up and be thin. I like to use the heat shrink um, just kind of as a, another uh, insulator to, to grab with the, uh, the teeth of the, of the jaws. So I'm going to line this up. I'll take my time to, to get it lined up right. It's pretty simple. Now I didn't pre-tin these arms because I know from experience that these ones take solder really well. You may have a cheaper recharge port that uh, you may have to pre-tin. So I got my soldering iron. Again, touch the tip and then a nice little solder joint there. And uh, again, I'm going to take my time with this and I'm going to slide over the heat shrink and I'm going to shrink this on before we go any further. Um, just so that, you know, when down the road when I'm attaching other wires that are live, that there's less chance they're going to touch anything. So we'll do that and then we'll move on. You, uh, you may not have the exact same recharge port as this, and so may, may be a little bit concerned about where to attach the wires correctly. Um, what you can do is take your time and use a multimeter. And you know that the pin is positive, so your red wire goes there from the battery and to the board. Um, but for the other two, what you can do is you can, you can plug in the jack that goes in here, and you can measure the current from each, each leg. Well, the leg that does disconnect when you plug the jack in, um, that's the leg that goes to, to the board. Um, so you can use a, a multimeter to kind of confirm and then color code or test which, which leg goes to which so that your, your switching operates correctly. Um, but for the last leg, which is the positive, I'm, I've got the live wire here from the battery and uh, the other red wire, and I'm going to twist these together. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to attach these both to the, uh, the center pin positive. Now again, helping hands here are invaluable because things won't stay twisted. I want to, uh, while they are twisted, I want to, uh, to tin them together nicely. And maybe if they're a little too long, snip off a little bit of excess. And of course, put on my heat shrink tubing before I go any further. I want to get these uh, lined up so that and they're going to go onto that final leg nicely. And uh, now these are these are live. You may be thinking, well, why don't I just pop in a kill key and uh, and then shut off the the power? Uh, well, it's not going anywhere, so it doesn't matter. And also, the kill keys are plastic, and sometimes depending on how hot your hotering, your soldering iron is, um, you can actually you know, the heat will transfer through these legs and melt the uh, the plastic of the kill key that you're using. I'm going to inspect that joint and see if that's, uh, that's what I want. Got a little bit of wire sticking out making a sharp kind of point there so I'm just going to snip that off. And uh, That's a little bit nicer. That's not going to poke through my shrink tube. Uh, so I'm going to heat shrink that one on there. And, uh, and we're basically almost done. Okay, so there's my, uh, my recharge port um, connected to my battery and uh, the black wires, black and red wire, and then the red and white wire, which is going to my board. Uh, that's gonna connect to a connector that attaches to my soundboard. Uh, the final thing to do is uh, just to inspect everything, see that those wires are going where I want. And then I uh, slide up the 3 8 inch clear shrink tube that, uh, that you had seen before and that goes over the whole thing now again if you've got lots of space you can use a little bit more 
um, but I uh, got a very limited amount of space in this saber that I'm building. So this just covers up all those metal parts and it butts up against that metal ring there. And then I'm going to use my heat gun in close quarters here. Put on the low setting. The low setting is, uh, is plenty to be able to get the heat that I need. Shrink up that tubing nice and tight. And that's it. And there I have my battery connected to my recharge port, connected to my connector, uh, which will go to my, uh, my soundboard. Now, if this is the first time you've done this, you may want to, uh, to double check. Well, it's always a good idea to double check um, that your connections are correct from the battery. So uh, I've got a multimeter here, but I'm going to switch it over and just, uh, just me measure voltage. So that's just going to measure the voltage of what's coming out of my battery. Now I've got the connector that goes in the end here. It's a 2.1 millimeter connector. I'm just going to do, just unscrew that. And here's what I'm going to do. Um, at first I'm going to test. This is simulating the circuit in operation and power going to the board. Now what I'm going to need for this is I'm going to need the other end of the plug that goes in here so that I have contact points. Here I'm going to go uh, the black connector to the black there and I'm going to carefully go without touching these I'm going to go the red and then I'm going to read on my multimeter and it shows me that I've got 7.84 volts coming so there's now 7.84 volts which is you know a full pretty much a full battery pack uh, full is probably going to be 8.2 um, but this is just how it comes from the store 7 uh, 7.8 is going to my board okay good so now that much is good I can take that off now what I'm going to do actually I'm going to leave that uh, I'm going to leave that connector in here for the test, and we'll see why in a minute. So I've got this uh, is the, uh, the the other 2.1 millimeter end. It's going in there, and I'm going to measure now. Um, this is uh, simulating a recharge uh, a recharger plugged in. So I'm going to go black negative to the outside, and I'm going to go red. Carefully go red to the inside without touching the two and keep them separate and look I've got okay 7.84 volts so that means that there's a direct line from the battery charger to the battery but the next thing the last thing I'm going to try is I'm going to hook up negative to negative again we just did this a moment ago and it read 7.8 volts but because the, the charge plug is in it should read zero it should have shut off power to the board so I've got that connected black to black red to red and this is going all squirrely. This is I've got a low battery in this. This is essentially what it does when it means there's no voltage. So there's no voltage. So what I'm going to do now, pull out this plug. Oh, jumps right back up to 7.84. If that was connected to a soundboard, you'd be hearing a boot sound now. This is properly wired, and it's going to work great. And that's how to test it once you've completed it.